In this video, I'm going to show you how to lay out an online store using Web Starts. Here you can see that I've created a fashion store. I have a logo, my company name, and then I have a strip here with a picture of this girl wearing some of my latest fashions. I have a headline. I have a button that links to my store, and when I click on that, it goes to my store catalog where people can shop through the various products. Returning to the home page and scrolling down, I've also added a form on my store that lets people subscribe to my mailing list in order to receive discount codes. At the bottom, I've created some featured products. When you click on one of these featured products, it'll take you to the category for which that product belongs. Let me show you how I created this using Web Starts. When you first sign up for a Web Starts account, you'll have an opportunity to choose a design template to start from. Each template is 100% customizable, and because I'm building an online store, I'm going to start with a store template. So I've chosen a template from the store category. I'm going to choose this jewelry store template, and so I select it. In a few moments, the page editor will load, and then I'll be able to begin tweaking the look and feel of my store. I'm going to start by changing out this icon and replacing it with a logo that is at least reminiscent of fashion, and that's going to be this uh, paper clip. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. So I've changed out my logo. You can upload an image if you already have a logo and use that, or choose a different icon from our icon library. Next, double click on the text that says jewelry store, and we're just gonna change that to fashion store. So you can customize that to be your own company name, of course. I'm just using fashion store as a company name. It's somewhat generic, but it'll do. Now everything that you work on within this top section above this dotted line is in the what's called the header. So if I drag something to the header and I select something in the header, it's highlighted in green, and that means that uh, those elements will appear at the top of every single page where the header is enabled on my site. So if I travel, go from page to page on my site, like for example, from the home to the about to the contact, you'll always see the logo and the company name at the top. Now I haven't saved my changes yet, and that's why you didn't see uh, fashion store at the top. Next, I'm just gonna drag this little cart widget up here into the top right. This is the cart, widget that links people to check out when they've added things to their cart. You wanna make sure that's on the top of every page to provide them with the best experience. If you're not sure how to add that, the way you do it is you click store and then you click store widgets, and this is called a cart widget. You could add another one, hypothetically. You can also select the cart widget, click on the color fill tool, and you can change some of the colors, or the color scheme for the cart widget. Moving on down here is where you create your headline. So whatever you're selling, you should probably reflect it in the headline of your website. So I'm just gonna say that I'm selling the latest fashions at discount prices. You can change that text, of course, to say whatever you want, but I do recommend that it has something to do with the products that you're selling. The next thing that I'm going to change is this background image and this strip. All of these elements are attached to the strip and I want to change the image so I double click on the strip itself and now I've already uploaded earlier this image of the gal in the tank top so I just double click on it so that I can add it. I want that to be a transparent background so I'm just going to knock out the background that way it appears white and I'm going to use the smart drag handle to create a little bit more space that allows her the top of her head to be in focus here uh, on this layout. Now you can see that because I put a white background um, in front or behind my white text, I can't see my white text anymore. So I'm gonna have to change that to something that I can see. So I'm choosing this dark gray color. I'm gonna do that same thing for the divider. Here you have a shop now button. The shop now button links to the store catalog page where you can sh choose to browse through all the different things that are being sold. You can 
link that button to any page you want. I've chosen the store there, you can see that. And that's really your primary call to action. Down below that, I've added a form to my page. And when people enter their name and their email address to this form, I can go under form settings and then specify to add them to a WebStarts mailing list. This is one of the unique features of WebStarts. It's very helpful for marketing your online store. You can actually add the email marketing app from the WebStarts dashboard, create an email list, and then put the people who complete your form directly into that email list and then send them broadcast emails and regularly scheduled follow-up emails. So for example, you could send them uh, an email about a sell that you're having, or you can send them an email on day one that they signed up thanking them for signed up, and then on day seven, remind them that it's been a week, and on day 14, maybe tell them it's been two weeks, so on and so forth. Uh, it's just a great way to keep your customers coming back to your website and staying top of mind. Anyway, you can customize that form to ask for other form fields like a phone number if you wanted to send them a coupon code via text. WebStarts does support coupon codes, so that's kind of a nice feature. Uh, it lets you attach a discount to a code. You've probably seen that across the web. I'm going to create a little bit of space at the bottom of my page because I want to show you how you can add those featured products to your page. So I click this little plus button right here. Then I click the store icon. I click store widgets, I click on product widget, and what this is going to do is bring up a list of all the products that I've created in my store. I created these products earlier, so you didn't see me create them, and if you haven't created any products, of course, there won't be any displayed in this particular window. But for this example, I'm going to click on these travel pants, and then I want those to be aligned right there, so I just drag them into place. I click on store again, I go back to store and then product widgets, and then I'm going to select these canvas shoes and I'm going to center those on my page. I like to use these pink guidelines to kind of indicate whether I'm online with another element on my page or whether I'm in the center of the page and so forth. Now I just have one more product that I want to add to the page and it's this V-neck t-shirt. I'm gonna move it all the way over to the right now that I have these three products on the page, I've strategically chosen a product from each of the three categories that I've created for my store. So I have a pants category, a shoes category, and a t-shirt or a shirts category. And so now I have a featured product from each that I have on my page. I don't like the way that there's no break between this form and these featured products. So what I'm going to do is select that strip that the form is on, and then I'm going to choose to make it a light kind of gray color. I'm going to stay right about in that shade. You can see how I did that there. I also feel like there's a little bit too much white space at the bottom of the page. So I'm going to click on this little dotted line and drag it up just to decrease the amount of space between the bottom of this view product button and my footer, which is the bottom section that's across each page on my website. Pretty happy with my changes, so I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Let's move on over to some of the store pages themselves and look at ways that we can alter the appearance of those pages. Clicking on my page drop down in the top left, I'm going to first choose the store page. This is kind of your catalog view and it shows all the categories. There's a search icon right here. You can sort by price, things like that. And then of course you have your products where you can click on and add them. If you don't want to display the categories in the search box and the sort features, click on this entire widget, click the settings icon, and then choose to uncheck each one of those boxes at the bottom that say show, show category, show product, and show sorting options. You can also do things like adjust the number of columns like if you wanted two items to be displayed in each column, or two columns of items, I guess you could say. Uh, the number of rows, I only have three products, so the number of rows isn't real relevant. Whether you want those images to be cropped or fit, uh, the aspect ratio for each of those images. If you have a really wide image, you might wanna go with something like 16 by nine, where if you have a really skinny image, you might wanna do something like nine by 16. If you want to make those changes 
on some of your other store pages, you can do that as well. Here you can see the checkout page. Once again, select the widget, click on settings, and then choose whether you'd like to display the categories, product search, and sorting options. And then one more time, you can do that on the store product page. This is the page that shows the details and allows you to select the quantity of a particular product. And here you can see, once again, you can select that widget and then make those changes. Earlier, I briefly showed you how to add a featured product to your page, but I didn't show you how to create those products. I just wanted to quickly cover that. Click on store, click on manage store, and then you'll be able to click the add product button in the top right. And from there, you can add things like a title description, images, videos, prices, and just about everything else. I cover everything in a store in another video, so be sure to check that out on the Web Starts channel. But that about covers it for this video on creating a good layout for your store. Don't forget to visit webstarts.com to create your very own online store just like this and see more helpful videos. Thanks for watching.